All the content contained in this webcast is for informational purposes only. The investments and strategies contained in this webcast may not be suitable for you. Please consult your own independent financial advisor before making any investment or trading decisions. Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to PremarketInfo.com, where we prepare you for the most important hour of the day, the first hour. Uh, Dennis, uh, S&Ps are flat here this morning, but it seems like we have a lot of earnings that aren't so good. Yeah, we do, Joel. Lots of earnings. Uh, ExxonMobil, obviously the big one that just reported, but... Uh, it's it's surprising that the market is hardly down because they just don't see a lot of good news this morning. Okay, Exxon Mobil here had this major run uh, going into well, not major, but it had a nice run going into earnings here. Started to creep up towards that fifty-two week high at uh, eighty-eight thirteen, and now it's gotten slammed. Dennis made a, a low at eighty-four thirty, or excuse me, made a low at eighty-five. 20 in the pre-market, we're starting to get a little bit of a bounce. What's your take on Exxon this morning? I think that $85 level, it was a low from a couple, of, so if we go back uh, three or four sessions ago, there was two coinciding lows at 84.98 and 85.03, and it's a, it's a level that we had talked about in the past quite a few times, so I think that 85 area might provide some support, especially with that low 85.20 in the pre-market there, Joel. <laughs> Yeah, uh, below, I mean, that level was cut through uh, on Monday. It did go to 84.39, but uh, that's when we had the lower open and just rallied back nicely. I guess you just have to look to see if it could get into yesterday's range. Uh, yesterday's range, well, we're right there. Dennis, Tuesday low at 85.64, so we've, we've dipped, but we are back into support, so... See if that 85.64 level holds. If not, I look for us to go back down to 84.39. More bad earnings for Aetna. Yeah, AET, uh, the health insurer, they're not reporting good earnings at all. It's getting slaughtered in the pre-market here. 44.90 it's trading right now, cutting through all pretty much major support. There was some pretty decent support, some lows here, 45 and a half. It's been trading below there on some pretty significant volume all morning, Joel. So maybe that 45 and a half, I'd use that area maybe for a swing number. Below that, it's kind of hard to find support. You know, you have some spotty lows, but I don't see anything jumping out at me. Uh, we've hit 44 quarter in the pre-market, bounced up, Dennis. Uh, the highest we've been able to bounce is 45 and a quarter. So I think those are going to be two really good numbers for you. You can't find support, Dennis, but I can find support here at, uh, <laughs> at 43.28 to 43.61. That was a double bottom back in February. Boy, it's really going to take some gas, though, to get it down there. But use the pre-market low, 44.20 is your first stopping point. Uh, if you're looking to cover some shorts or try a brave long. Uh, kind of. Uh, I just want to stick though, Joel, with that theme. Uh, UNH. Like, let's talk about a couple other stocks in okay. this sector because the whole sector I see down in the pre-market here. Humana down in sympathy here. Uh, all these stocks tend to trade together. They're all healthcare providers. HUM is trading at 85.82 right now, Joel. That's I think a, maybe. Well, I mean, you never know. Humana moves. Uh, it's offered at 87 a quarter, so it's offered down a buck and a half printed down almost three dollars so humana looks like it's going to be taking it on the chin as well just a couple more and let you do a technical on them unh is another one which is trading down here in the pre-market 57.90 so it's trading down almost a buck with that with that Aetna earnings um also another one we've got here is wellpoint which is trading down wlp uh, that's trading down around 69.5 in the pre-market, so it's under 90 cents of pressure too. So this whole sector looks like it's going to come under some pressure today, Joel. Okay, uh, looking at that Humana, Dennis, uh, do see support here. <laughs> well, there was support, 86.43. That's what I would use as a swing number. Uh, but you have major support in uh, in Humana at 85. Uh, Wellpoint Health, which is also trading down, you have to look at the set at 68 even. That was a major low uh, for the stock, currently trading at 69.53. And uh, what was the other one you mentioned? Uh, I think it was C or uh, UNH. 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 Uh, moving down to Dennis Boy. This has really rocked the sector. This is trading at 57.75. 
We've had a low in the pre-market right here, 57.75 has not even gotten a bounce off that. Uh, really, you got a lot of air in the stock, Dennis, all the way down to a uh, little bit of support at 57. But after 57, this thing gets real ugly and drops off to the $55 level. Yeah, so going to be an ugly day for your healthcare providers, it looks like. Uh, obviously, we have a few other major earnings announcements this morning here too, Joel. UPS being one of them. We got UPS uh, that just reported here. 79.65 is where it closed. 78.15 is where it's trading right now here. Uh, we had one, that one spotty low, Joel, 78 bucks right on the button. So I'm wondering, uh, or 78.03 actually. So I'm wondering if it could get a little bit of a lift there. It's traded right through there though in the pre-market, but it's now finding a bid there. It got as low. What do you got? 77, Joel, for the low? Yeah, it traded down to 77 bucks on a little bit of volume. And now we're just popping up here and uh, holding 78. But have to concur with you there because not only was that the low uh, back on uh, April 10th, Dennis, but you also had a low in that stock at 77.90 on uh, March 15th. So that 78 is going to be a real good swing level. If it can't hold that level, I'd look at to go down to that pre-market low of 77. And then coming back on the upside, we got a long ways to go to uh, to yesterday's low and close. Uh, seventy nine forty three was the close, was the low, and seventy nine sixty five was the close. Maybe we should just do some FedEx numbers, just because a lot of people like to pair trade that with the UPS. FedEx is trading slightly down with the UPS move, eighty seven sixty eight after closing at eighty eight twenty two. What's your technical on FedEx there, Joel? Uh, you got real good support here at 86, uh, 86.42. Uh, that was the low on uh, April 10th. Uh, that coincides uh, with the gap area there. You had a gap high of uh, 85.98. Uh, so at $86 level, if it uh, doesn't hold this pre-market level, I've been looking for a minor stopping point at 87.15, uh, but that, look for that 86.24 level. Uh, Pepsi reported earnings here this morning too, Joel. The 67 has been like a rock. I just want to disclose I do have a trading position on in this uh, stock as well. So I'll limit my comments, but I'll let Joel do a technical. That, Dennis, the 67 has been huge. It was the high from the last two days. Uh, just below that, 66.84, 66.86. Also had a high back at 66.82 on uh, April 3rd. Uh, so that, that area, if it looming large in the market uh, above that uh, you do have uh, some other highs right above that Dennis at like 67.20 so it looks like it's running into some problems here I, d I just wanted to comment on coke yesterday Dennis uh, all right here's a eight seventy five dollar stock and their boards recommending a two-for-one stock split and apples at 612 <laughs> and they're not even considering it I mean what, what what's the logic behind that What's the logic behind the, the stock split for Coke or the lack of a stock split from Apple? Both. Both. Well, I, I don't know. I think the, the, the Coke, obviously, that stock split really took us by surprise. I think the market didn't expect that whatsoever. And obviously, it is uh, weaker here. or it, it got a nice pop on there yesterday, Joel, taking out you know that major resistance at 74.50. Actually had a little bit more resistance at 75, which it did take out just slightly at the close. I think that might get a little bit of resistance still, though, because it, didn't, it was only trading above it for a few minutes before it did come back. But I don't know what... You know, it was a real shocker to me. I did not expect, you know, a stock split. I don't think anybody did coming out of Coke. But why? I mean, it's only a $75. I don't know stock. why. I'm not the manager of the company. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, that's what I'm saying. I was shocked. I, I, I have no idea it, why they're doing and that And why either. won't Apple split? And is it 612 Apple th likes their high stock price. They think high stock price means a good company. I don't know, Joel. <laughs> Man, I mean, why do you do this show if you can't tell our <laughs> listeners this stuff? Like, can't geez. tell them why Apple doesn't <laughs> split the stock. Why doesn't Warren Buffett split Berkshire Hathaway? He says there's costs involved with splitting the stock, and you don't really get the shareholder really doesn't get any more nominal value because the shares just get cut in half. But, you know, obviously you can get smaller traders that can participate in nice round lot numbers. Like I think what you got is a retail trader just trading 10 or 20 shares of Apple now, as opposed to if it was split 10 for one, they could trade 100 shares of it. So uh, that's, you know, the, the, the thing with the stock splits is that it basically makes it more affordable for your smaller retail guy to trade it. So I'm not sure why Apple doesn't split. Maybe they don't want the little retail guy trading their stock. Maybe they just want the institutions trading it, Joel. 
Okay, well, not all the earnings are bad, Dennis. Uh, Teradyne seems to be getting a pop here in the in the pre-market. Actually, yeah, last night they reported great numbers. Stock took off, has had, traded as high as 18 and a quarter this morning, but not on a lot of volume. And Joel is always right, you know, you just got to watch it when it's not trading on a lot of volume. Sometimes you get some people painting the tape like Joel was explaining yesterday. This 1750 area is absolutely enormous. If it opens above there, I'd say that that might give you some support. So I would use that whole 1750 area as uh, my swing number here. It opens above it, I'd use it as support. If it opens below it, which I don't think it's going to, I would still use that as resistance. Okay, uh, Dennis, you actually got a, you got a print in the pre-market in this stock at 1851. Oh, there's one. Oh, this must be an odd lot because my my uh, ticker only shows the round lot. So 18 and a quarter, and must have traded some odd lot size up at 18.51. That's. Well, I was actually right after the close. Oh, you're saying after the close last night? Yeah, I don't have those up there. So trade up to 18.51 last night. So really traded high last night. Right, right, and there was some decent volume, and now it's just kind of trickled down on low volume. But you're right here. The stock is breaking above that 17.50 level, so that would be good support. Uh, going uh, longer term, Dennis, uh, back in March earlier in this year, or excuse me, earlier last year, March of last year, the stock traded uh, 1911 and 1919. So if it really gets going, uh, there could be some targets. Uh, a Michigan company not having some good earnings, uh, Dow Chemical. Dow Chemical is down. It took out this critical 36 level right near the end of the day yesterday. 36 had some huge institutional selling pressure. Took it out right in the last couple minutes to get rid of that selling pressure. But I guess it's just not enough because the stock uh, is uh, then reported earnings here this morning and it's really giving it back. So obviously that whole 36 area is still going to be major resistance. I don't know if it comes into play though because this stock's trading down at 34 7 70, Joel, really getting hurt here in the pre-market. Yeah, and it really doesn't show any sign of uh, going up. I mean, it's just uh, the, the the chart is just a steady, steady drip down here from when they released the earnings. Uh, 35.75 was the high, and now someone's just peppering whatever bid comes out. Uh, looks to be some very good support here at the 35.35 level. That was a two-day low. 34.35, uh, I think you mean. 34.35, correct. Uh, that's the two-day low, so look for a little bounce off there. I mean, here's another pretty thick stock. Trades a lot of volume, and, you know, it's going down on 300,000. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of people missing uh, missing some trades in between 34 and 36. So it's going to be hard for this thing to get a pop back up to that area. H&R Block reported last night. Looks like it's going to be one of your big losers of the day. HRB, the symbol on that, it's trading 14 and a quarter right now. After closing at 16.74, I have a four-month chart up. That's not low enough because we're trading lower than that. Let's go out to the weeklies here. We got to go back all the way into October to find this level. We bottomed at 14 bucks in early October, Joel. If it cuts through there, we have multiple lows down there, just under 13 in the whole 12.50 to 12.75 area. I mean, that's a dollar and a half more away from here. But I mean, the stock just fell three bucks, so it could fall another point. Who knows? What do you think? Uh, what, did anybody file any tax returns or anything? No. <laughs> yeah, it was right after tax season. Well, obviously, it wasn't a good time. Maybe everybody does them themselves now, Joel. People are getting smarter. The Internet, the Internet. Everybody can do it themselves now. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, $14 uh, has been holding up here in the pre-market. Uh, you did sneak a print below that at thirteen ninety-seven. So 14 I don't know. If something tells me this 14 is going to be good for a little bit of a bounce. Uh, you had some lows back in late November of last year at the 1450 level. So now that will act as a swing number. You get 1450, it could recoup some of this ground. And you're right, Dennis. I mean, it just the lows are the lows are low in this thing. 1357, 1371 will absolutely have to be the bomb today in Herb. <laughs> absolutely. Well, nothing's absolute ever. So. What do you think of this overall market here, Joe? We just don't have time to continue on going through all the earnings. So give us a Yeah, we'll be here. At, well, Dennis, I would, I'm still focusing on this 1390 level. Yeah. Uh, we did get through it a little bit in the pre-market. We got the 1392 and a quarter. Um, I'm just looking to see if we can get some closes above 1390. I know I've been kind of, you know, poo-pooing some of the earnings, and uh, you know, finally we got some bank, you know, real blowout numbers from Apple, 
And uh, we still couldn't get above that 1390 level. And then Exxon Mobil comes out today and disappoints. So 13 number, 1390 um, is my major number on the upside. Keep an eye on that if we can creep back up there. Coming back on the downside, Dennis. When you have a big gap between an intraday low and a globex low, which you have from yesterday, a lot of times if that intraday low cannot hold it, which is 1380 and a quarter, you will just slice through the 70s like you did when it went up the other night. So if 1380 and a quarter is critical support for this market to keep living off the Apple earnings. If not, I think we're going to slip down to yesterday's Globex low at 1369.50s. So that's our uh, wrap this morning, folks, and uh, hope these numbers will help you out, and we'll be back with you tomorrow.